Day's Tale. Uh, oh, yes, I should say. <laughs> Definitely uh, unsuitable for <laughs> anyone eating. Yeah, yeah. Right. Definitely. So sort of PG slash 12 if you're having tea. Goodness me. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> wow. Father Simon, Brother Matt, Sister Katie slash Susie, who's ever producing Sister Katie producing today, I wish mm -hmm. to confess sin that I have held secret locked away from the world for more than 30 years. Let me take you back to summer in the mid-1980s when I was on the cusp of becoming a teenager. I spent most of my time at my best friend's house, a shambling old cottage in the Wiltshire countryside with a large rambling garden where we spent our time doing what kids did in the 1980s, which was basically trying not to throw frisbees into a power station. <laughs> no, I remember that well. Well, yeah. I didn't do right. anything like that in the 1980s. And either avoiding or annoying his two older sisters, one of which was turning 18 on the day in question. This milestone was to be marked with a big party and barbecue for her and her friends to enjoy. For some reason, my best friend and I were left in charge of the barbecue. To this day, I'm not sure why, as we were both 12 and, <laughs> and no idea how to cook anything. Truly different times. But how hard could it be? Well, with a day of utter chaos and party preparations finally finished, the party began and we took our station at the aforementioned barbecue. With expectations of a busy night ahead, we began to cook up the numerous beef and pork products, knowing that stockpiling was essential for the long night ahead. However, after an hour or so, realisation dawned on us both that our wares were not in demand, as 18-year-olds seemed only to be interested in two things. One, the opposite sex, yep. and two, diamond white, which was everyone's <laughs> favourite back in the day. We, of course, were interested in neither. But with our stockpile building, it only seemed right to help ourselves, as it would only go to waste. I'll point out, at this time in my life, I was very fit, had a high metabolic rate, and could eat pretty much anything. <laughs> at a certain point in the evening, we decided we weren't really needed. We were bored, had no idea what was really going on, didn't like the look of anything, so we called it a night and went to bed, with me in a sleeping bag on the floor of my friend's room. An hour or so later, I awoke with a very uncomfortable feeling, hot sweats, and the realisation that I needed to get to the bathroom very quickly. Yeah. So, obviously, I'm gonna, just going to sort of skip over quite <laughs> as close. <laughs> I proceeded to... Do Shall we that. say yeah. redecorate the bathroom? Oh, I'm aware of the timing of this feature, so we'll leave out any yes. further detail. Yes, yeah. please. Seeing the devastation in front of me, I did what any 12-year-old would do. I chewed some toothpaste and <laughs> beat a hasty retreat to the bedroom. Lovely. All of this was done unseen by anybody. An hour or so later, my friend's sister came into the room and said, Ugh, I can smell sick. Or was that effect? At this point, I, I should have admitted my sins. However, she was scary, and I was already knee-deep in deception. So I said that I had been to the bathroom, and I saw the carnage too. To solidify my response, I did also mention that I'd seen a very drunk young girl in the area at the time. At this, she left the room and left us to slumber. The next morning, we awoke bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to see the normal devastation a teenage party leaves and to find my friend's older sister, marigold-clad, and on her knees in the bathroom. That should have been me, obviously, but I hid my shame and we carried on with the day as normal. So, Father Simon, here's the point. I need forgiveness not from my best friend's sister. As to be honest, she and her sister had tormented us both over the years and this seemed to level the score. Also, I don't ask forgiveness from my friend or his parents as they were unaffected and they got a clean bathroom out of it. I do, however, beg forgiveness from the inebriated 18-year-old Betsy, who I brought into this story. On admitting my sins to my friend a year or so ago, he told me that... <laughs> Not only was Betsy teased for the remainder of her school days for being so inebriated she threw up in her friend's house and then forgot about it, but she was also reminded of the event constantly through her university years. But that is not all. What? This was also mentioned in great detail in the speeches on her wedding day, <laughs> years after the event. For over 30 years, she's been carrying the burden of my deception. For this... I beg forgiveness. So here's a, here's a tale, uh, a lie that has kind of really escalated over the years because it was just a little thing when he was 12. And this story has followed Betsy all her life straight the way through to her wedding and it wasn't her at all. It was Basil Fotherington ah. Thomas. On the, oh, <laughs> that's who it was. 
The voice of responsibility and moral outrage, Sister Katie. Yeah, I, I obviously really feel for Betsy, but I, I actually have to forgive Basil because why on earth were 12-year-olds left to do the barbecue unattended? Yes. And having been the younger sibling, I know how oh. scary your elder sibling's friends can be. I think I might have lied in the same situation. So, Basil, you're forgiven. Brother from another Yes, brother. we definitely file this under what did you expect was going to happen? <laughs> Who are we putting in charge of the barbecue with all the meat and the burning coals? Oh, the two 12-year-olds. Mm-hmm. I'll be fine. Um, so, yes, I'm, I'm definitely going to forgive. And also, frankly, if Betsy had lived the life where this was the worst thing that had happened, <laughs> then it's pretty faultless, I mm. would say. So, definitely forgive them.